On today's episode, Dad fights with a starfighter and is losing. Which never is always acts like a child. You flying and then you get shot. Oh no! Oh no! And is impressed with a spring. Slide that door back and it flips out and it's like springs down. Who got this? Dad got this. What's up everybody? Welcome to Dad Got This. Today, we're gonna do a little tour of dad's collectibles or useless junk as some of his uh, followers may have called them in the past. You know who you are. But this is gonna be me going through, this is gonna be me. I can't even start a sentence without messing it up. Dad didn't get that. This is just gonna be me going through and showing you some of my collectibles and going through them and showing you how some of them work with the Star Wars ships. Please remember, dad's doing a giveaway right now. So all you have to do to enter the giveaway is be a subscriber and comment on a video. Super simple. We're gonna give away something. It's actually a Loungefly Christmas backpack once we hit 2,000 subscribers. It's gonna be pretty nice. We're pretty close to 2,000, so get in there while you can. That's Dad's useless junk. Let's just get into it. The ship that took down the Death Star, Luke Skywalker's very own X-Wing Starfighter, AKA, Red five. Okay, everybody, let's get into uh, the first ship. The first ship is going to be my vintage X-Wing fighter. This one, I have uh, some crazy hard to find parts on here. The hardest thing to find on these X-Wing fighters is the cannons. These cannons came off, they broke, the tips broke, everything was a problem with these. And for that reason, people sell these for crazy prices on eBay. You're talking like 30 to $50 for a set, and that's a lot of money. The problem also is there are fakes, reproductions, that will tell you that they're original parts, but they're totally not. They don't fit right, they don't look the same, they don't feel the same. I actually bought some on eBay once, and they were terrible. And I had to actually go through eBay and get them returned because they were listed as vintage and they obviously weren't. Other than that, the other hard to find part on this ship is the uh, canopy class. This thing comes in two different colors, depending on what year the ship is. There is a version of a clear glass and then a smoked glass. Um, I can't remember which years are which. I think the uh, newer versions use the smoked glass and the older, older versions were the clear. The way this uh, works is you have flip down landing gear here. And then you have your X-Wing mechanism. Your X-Wing mechanism has two things. You have your button here, which is to close, which never, which is always hard to do. I need to, I need to put some WD-40 in this sucker, but there we go. If you pull that button back, it'll click, and then you're in your closed wing mode. And then this was the coolest thing as a kid. If you hit R2, the wings extend and lock. This thing is awesome. It has uh, lights and sounds, so it'll do a laser from the front and the, the same little ring, 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 noise, which is basically a motor that is spinning and hitting a little tab and making that noise. It's pretty ingenious for back then, but the motors lock up and the contacts get bad. They're a pain in the butt. When I went through, I repaired this, it worked. I threw some batteries in it recently and the only thing that worked was the light, which means I would have to oil the motor and take the whole thing apart. I ain't doing that. But this is dad's X-Wing fighter. I love this thing as a kid. I also have some reproduction stickers on here because mine were so bad I couldn't, couldn't deal with how they looked. I wanted these to look as original as, they, as I could um, for display. And that's what I cared about more was um, looking good for display as opposed to being original for value because these are never getting sold. And now I present the fastest hunk of junk in the galaxy, the ship that did the Kessel Run in under 12 parsecs, the legendary one and only Millennium Falcon. Let's get into my little Millennium Falcon here. Okay, these came with a main hatch that just kind of floppily sits on top. Now I went through and I restored this entire thing. I took it all apart. I cleaned it. I soaked it in a, in a solution of like hair 
peroxide and whatnot to try to get all the uh, staining off and everything. And it came out pretty decent. Um, it's got mostly all original stickers. There are some that I replaced with aftermarket stickers. And it's got some aftermarket parts because there are some things you cannot find. So I'll start with the uh, hardest thing to get. The Jedi training ball. This is a little stick with a ball on it. And it's supposed to represent the little Jedi training machine that Luke uses inside the Millennium Falcon to blast and block the blaster things with his lightsaber. This thing just sits on a peg inside here. The fact that any of them survived childhood from people is amazing, but mine certainly didn't. And I had to find one and I was not willing to pay the crazy prices that you will find on eBay for a vintage one. So somebody has gone out and made aftermarket reproduction versions of these. Dad had to go reproduction and buy that. Other than that, that's the only reproduction item other than I said a few stickers on my Falcon. This is my original Falcon that I played with as a kid in the 80s. Dad's old. Some of the other parts that always got left behind and got broken were the good old radar dish. That one got many space battles would break that off. And then some of the other things that were very just loose. Gotta have a smuggler's hatch. So the smuggler hatch opens up and then it has a little compartment where you could hide characters or your smuggled goods. Cause you know, Han Solo, he's a little nefarious. He redeems himself, you guys know. Or do you know, you're Star Wars people. Are you Star Wars people? I don't know, I am. So you've got your smuggler's hatch and then you've got your Dejeric board. And I, this was the best thing to me, the fact that this was in there. I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. And the gunner chair in the middle was always pretty cool. You could set a character in there and then he could have his battles. That was nice. The hatch in the front is supposed to open up like that. And you could kind of sit a character in there. It didn't really work. The characters were too big. So it was a little, a little wonky, but I mean, this thing's huge already. If they tried to make this big enough to put an actual character in, it would have been ridiculous. And then the other thing that's kind of broken on dad's ship is the hatch, the ramp. I had to rebuild a little hook for my ramp door just to get it to hook on. And then these struts always get broken or lost. These are freaking expensive. I think I just looked this up. It was like 35 bucks for the little door. I just hang mine on the wall, so I was okay making a repair. Um, like I said, I'm not trying to sell this ever, so I don't care about the value of hurting the vintage value by using a reproduction part or making a repair. You know what? It's the Millennium Falcon. She's supposed to be a little beat up and, and worked on and and screwed up. So the other, uh, so you've got, the way it works is you've got a one leg here that kind of comes down like this and just folds in. And then these two legs are push legs. So they push up like this and they're supposed to lock in place. Now there's two little clips here that always get loose and cause them to fall. So you would constantly like lock your, your ship down. So you'd be like, all right, coming in for my landing. And then the legs would just collapse and the ship would fall over. And like this one has already gone up inside the dang thing. So dad displays his on the wall normally. So it's like, I have to take the legs out and screw the thing on and, and, and do some stuff. But this thing is like, this is probably my my most prized possession of all my Star Wars ships. It was the big one. It was the one that I wanted as a kid so badly. And my parents came through and got it for me. And I would fly this around the house and it makes lights and sounds. I'm not gonna go through putting it in battery and everything. It, the motor probably needs oil and everything because the way it works is there's this little 
motor that spins and flips a little wheel that goes and it makes that noise and then it lights the thing. Well, those motors are old and they get seized up. You have to take them out and you got to put gear oil in them and whatnot. I did all that when I restored these and they worked then. They probably don't work now, but I know they could work if I took the time and did it. So that's the Millennium Falcon. We'll get into the other ones here in a second. Because you can't have a space battle without a bad guy. The TIE Fighter. This is the scourge of the skies. Any rebel saw this in their rear view? Did they have rear view mirrors? I don't know. Okay, the next ship we're going to get into is the TIE Fighter. This is such an iconic Star Wars ship. And this one's really cool. Now, this is probably my worst shape ship because it's very yellowed from the sun. Um, the, the glass is super yellow. I soaked it and I did it in all this uh, special solution that you're supposed to use. And this was as best as I could get it. I didn't want to go any further and possibly damage it because I really wanted it to be my ship. The base and everything of all these are all my ships. I may have had to buy some additional parts, but they're mine. They're what I had as a kid when I when I played with them. The TIE Fighter is pretty cool. You have uh, the doors open for the cockpit. There's a button at the back that would do the same style lights and sounds as the other ships. And then it has this. This is the coolest feature in the world. So. You'd be flying, and then you get shot. Oh no, oh no! These go flying, but these were awesome, and these would break all the time because when you would do just what I did, that mechanism would break. Like, you can see here, it didn't break, it just came off, but this piece of the wing came off from this piece of the wing, so now you have to go ahead and put it back together, and they just slide back on, and the spring mechanisms would break, but I love these things. These were so much fun with that explosion uh, feature. Um, you can't really fit a character in there. You can, but they're like all sticking out. It's all wonky. These were more for just playing with the ships. So that's my uh, twin iron engine fighter or TIE fighter. When you absolutely positively have to take down an AT-AT walker on a snowy planet, snow speeder. The next ship that we have here is the Snowspeeder. And this one is probably one of the hardest one to get all the parts for. There are so many little parts. This part comes off, this part comes off, this part comes off, these little parts come off, this part comes off. And the thing that is not original on this one is this little block and this little harpoon. The harpoon that they used when they they took down the AT-AT -AT fighter, so they shot the harpoon and swung around them and took out the legs and took them down. Well, this thing gets lost on everybody's ship. So badly that the original ones are impossible to find almost. And if you find them, they're ridiculously expensive. So I had to buy a reproduction one. That's why it's so white versus my gray ship. It, you make some sacrifices. Um, there's two little lights in here that will light up the cannons, which is pretty cool but they always go bad. The connections go bad or the wire goes bad or the bulb goes out. And you can spend a lot of money trying to put these back together. Um, I was lucky. I had most of my stuff. I had to buy some here and there parts. I actually had to buy some additional ships. It was cheaper to buy ships that had the parts on it and then sell those other parts I didn't need off. It was a whole production I went through. Um, one of the other things that is hard to get is the uh, canopy and canopy glass. So these glasses come out and they can be a little bit of a problem. And one other cool feature is this has like a flip down landing gear. So if you pull the landing gear in and then there's a little door here that slides forward and then you can slide that door back and it flips out and it's like springs down. So this is a cool ship. It's in really good shape, looks perfect now, um, but it was a lot of work to get this one restored. So that's it. That's dad's vintage Star Wars ships collection. We'll get into more of the collectibles and the different stuff that I have on this wall behind me. Later, I'll do some more videos, but that's just a quick walkthrough of my vintage ships that I had as a child that I restored myself and now display as toys that my daughter kind of wanted to play with and I had to explain it's not a toy, but it is a toy. Little confusing, but even in a galaxy far, far away, Dad doesn't do outros, so that's it. For more dad adventures, go to youtube.com slash dadgotthis. Be sure to like, 
subscribe, and hit the damn bell. I double dog dare you. Come on, you have to do it. It was a double dog dare. I mean, those are the rules. <laughs>